Hi, everybody. This is the pop-up show, and uh, I'm Alex, and this is uh, Monday, and it's a thing we like to do uh, at this time every uh, every week. Let me see here who we got. Scott Boddicker. Okay, let's admit all, as we say. There we go. There we're admitting all. Yes. Ooh, as wow. We say. That's a lot of people, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, there's Scott Boddicker, and there's uh, Charlene Solis, and there is uh, 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 our old friend Charlie Wallace, uh, Len LaFrisco, of course, the uh, lovely and attractive voice of Edward Berger. And finally, That's right. Paula Levin. Hello, Paula. Hi. Oh, wait a minute. I got to turn you guys on. Yeah, hi. <laughs> hi. <laughs> I'm all turned on now. Yeah, I, I, I have to do these things, you know, I have to make them work. And huh. mm. wow, mm. this had some. Where's, where's your wife? Uh, she's <laughs> downstairs getting some a package oh. that was somebody called up and said, You have a package downstairs, you know, and it's probably something from Amazon, which they're supposed to deliver to the door, but they don't want to come up eight stories. God you're, forbid, you're, you know. That place is hard to get into. <laughs> uh, it, 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 well, it is and it isn't, you know. It, it's, a, you know, they haven't done anything with the uh, doors in this, uh, in, in this place for what, forever. Uh, and it's got this system, which is, I don't know how it works, but you saw how many numbers there are on that thing and you had to go find 8i to, you yeah, know, and and uh, it's not easy. And that elevator is scary as shit. <laughs> all they would have to do is put in a system that calls your phone, right? Right. So that you down there just have a thing like you just punch in eight I, right? Okay, and then it will <clears throat> ring our phone up here. Then we answer it and say, "Hey, okay, fine," you know. Uh, but no, they don't do that. They've got this system that's been wired for like 20 years now. It's a whole wired system. And of course it goes out. I mean, they did something where they cut a wire out by mine and I couldn't answer the door. And I finally had to have my uh, super come up and he had to reroute the whole wire. Wow. It was just weird. It was just terrible. But only one of the many technical problems I wind up having. Today I've got a, you know, I use a TV set in the guest room. Uh, so that I don't have to watch TV with Marjorie because she's watching all those damn binge watch things, right? So uh, my set now has it has a little thing that when it's it's uh, hooked up to the optical, you know, audio, it l lights up with a little thing on the screen. It says optical audio, and then it goes away because it's it's it notified you that that's what's working. Well, that's always there now. It won't go away, and everything I've ever tried to do with it Wait won't a make it what, go away. What is optical audio? It sounds like a contradiction in terms. That's the thing you attach a sound bar to. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's an optical cable. For better, and so my set then good. says, oh, I recognize you have this, it's, okay, and it comes out for a short time, and it goes out. Now it doesn't go out. Hmm. And I'm looking for how to take care of it. And there's nothing online of how to take care of it. Yeah. He says, well, why don't you call Samsung? And I'm going, yeah, well, like they answer phones. Now. They do. They huh? have good customer service. Do they really? You yeah. You can actually access them through the help on the TV and they'll call you. You can request a call and they call and they're really good. Really? I'll huh. see if I had an issue with my TV. Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm sure. I mean, it just won't you go. You do speak Korean, Korean, right? <laughs> i knew there was a hook somewhere <laughs> no no they're actually really good I'm, I'm kidding around but i i got great customer service from them when i had a really? tv issue yeah well, I'll, I'll 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 give it a try you know how fast do they answer the phone pretty, pretty quickly and by the way the the customer service i think by the accents in the philippines not korea uh -oh. <laughs> hello sir Oh, really? Yeah, you can tell it's a Philippine speaking English. I called, you, you weren't kidding me. No, no, no. I called, kidding about the Korean thing was kidding. But they, yeah, they do yeah. have good customer service. All right. I'm glad you were kidding about Korean because I hate the Koreans. You know, <laughs> I, made your TV. <laughs> I, 
Have you ever met a Korean? I guess you maybe have. I've been there many times, yeah. Oh, you've been there? I've dated a Korean. I've worked, I've worked <laughs> with a Korean. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, I've never met a Korean. I don't think. Yeah, I have. Well, that's a good basis for your hatred, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure you didn't switch political parties on? No, I, or, but I'm, I, I shouldn't hate hate them. I wasn't married to one. <laughs> oh, hello, Marjorie. Well, that hello. was the other way. So, what was the package? What was the package downstairs? It was the package, but what happened was all the packages went to another building, and the woman that was so nice, she was from the other building. She called everyone. Wow. Wow. Yeah, we have four entrances. Yeah, Amazon does this every now and then because they don't really hire people that they can count on but they don't look at the package if it says building two that's not building three mm. right or we have a courtyard and then it has four separate entrances mm. building one building two building three and obviously building four obviously <laughs> however if amazon had done it'd be one two three and five okay but anyway <laughs> um hey, can i tell you my amazon story alex what so here I got to tell you an Amazon story. Okay. So here, here at the office, a guy shows up to deliver Amazon and asked me a question, asked for some advice. I gave him some business advice, whatever. I shook my hand, thank you, and left. The next day, he shows up to deliver a package, and he says to the, the people in the, in the front office, where's that really old guy? I want to ask him a question. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my new name. In the really, office. really old guy? Hey, really where's the really guy? old guy? <clears throat> He's back in the office. Wow. That's interesting. That's fascinating. <laughs> anyway, so uh, so you say that if you, if I call Samsung, they're, they're good about yep. it. Thing. Really good. I well, had a great experience. Because I, I find that when you call uh, customer support now, the guy you get doesn't even know what company he's doing it for, <laughs> you know? And Marjorie had this whole thing with with uh, Hall's sugar free cherry or grape or well, I don't know what the flavor was. Puff drops. All right. So she ninety nine dollars worth. She bought, right? she, she never can order just a few. She has to order everything that Hall's ever created. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, they send it to her and it's not sugar free. So uh, she then uh, explained it. Then then you called them and you said, uh, it's not sugar-free. It's got sugar in it. And, and they, they said, said, give it away. They said, give it away. We'll send you another one. Mm -hmm. And then they send her another one. And, and then it's the same. It, guess what? It's the same. It's, it's <laughs> sugar-free. Now, if I'm a, if I'm a diabetic, they're, they're opening themselves up to a suit, you know? Um, but uh, what, what happened to Albert? I thought I just oh, saw come him. back. Oh, okay. All right. Anyway, so now we get it. And the second time, it also is, sh sh is sugar, okay, with sugar. So you call them again. And what did they say now, Marjorie? The second time, I said, well, you have to return it to the, to the shipper. I said, no, I bought it through you. You take care of it. So it went on and on and on. What four months? This wow. went on over and over again. They kept sending it to us, and it was sugar. Wow. And they kept saying, "Hold on to it, or just throw it away, or do whatever you want to. We don't want you to have to ship it back." So now we've got eight hundred <laughs> packages <laughs> of Hall's sugar um, uh, cough drops. So. Finally, finally, what? After scre literally screaming and yelling at them, they say, we'll take it off your uh, bill. We'll, we'll take it off your card that you put it to. So then you look at your card and they never take it off. And then she has to call. They never gave me the credit. They, they didn't give me the credit back. They were horrible. This took her a good, I'd say it took you a month and a half. Four months. Four months. Four months. It. Four months till I got my money back. Wow. Mm -hmm. You still coughing? You still coughing? <laughs> <laughs> no, she, she puts it under her tongue every night when she goes to sleep. Because I taught her that that was good if you didn't want to cough during your sleep. Well, also, if also you have dry mouth. She has dry mouth, and it was good for dry mouth. So I said, do that. You know, and the reason why it's sugar free is if you did this every night, your dentist right. would love you. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> 
So uh, that's the reason she, oh, by the way, thank you, Andrew, for sending me the phone number of Samsung. Yeah. I'll call them right after the show. Oh, I'm sure you will. Call during the show. It'll be fun to listen to. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we'll have Marjorie call Amazon and try and get money back. That would be fun. Is that a, is that a Korean company? Yes. Samsung? Samsung. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, you, could, you, could, you could start off right right off, Alex, with your with your comment about Korea. That, that would go over. Yeah, I hate the hell out of Koreans. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, <laughs> can you help me fix my machine? Yeah, there right. You there you go. There you go. I have, I, have, against, I have nothing against Koreans except that <laughs> hey, I've never met one, so I can't hate them, you know. So um I mean I'm every not, grocer on the corner in New York was from Korea. Oh what? I thought all the grocers, the fresh produce grocers in New York City were all Korean. And the ones on the corners? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. You don't like those guys, do you, Marjorie? You don't like those fruit vendors. You know why? Because every time you buy fruit, it, it, it's old. Mm -hmm. Well, it's old. The, fruit, the fruit or the buyer? I'm halfway towards mold. <laughs> the, the mold doesn't show until you bring it home for a day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sounds like a good Seinfeld episode. That's why I don't like them. <laughs> yeah. Hello, Albert. <laughs> oh, he went away. We lost wow. him again. Uh -huh. <laughs> Did he keep pushing the wrong button or something? You never played Whack Albert at the Chuck E. Cheese? <laughs> uh, yeah, Whack Albert. up his head. Yeah, whack a mole. Yeah, yeah. Do you, do you like Whack a mole as a game? Is that a good never idea? Never played it. Huh? I never heard of it. Never heard of it? The stupid you? game, the little heads pop up and the kids hit it with a hammer. There's Albert. Hi, hey, Albert, quick. Hi, hello, Albert. <laughs> Maybe. But, but, Albert? Here's a sound oh. off. There Albert, he is. Are you there? Can you hear us? Yeah, I keep getting kicked off this thing. I, I don't know what's going on today. Really? Yeah, Alex, hello, everybody. Florida, man. Hmm. Oh, it's because you're from Florida. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no one say gay, so you can stay on. Oh. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh boy, I'm telling you. So anyway, so I, you know, I, I it's one thing or another. Technically, I'm getting tired of it all. You know, it's but amazing any of this stuff works at all. To be perfectly honest, with you. <laughs> if I don't get this thing work, I'm I'm buying a new TV set. What the did hell? You try unplugging it. Maybe it does a reset. Yeah, no, I did that. Of course, of course. I did everything. I changed the batteries and all the remote control. <laughs> oh, Did you unplug the? the I adopted the, a the Korean child. Put it back. I, I adopted a Korean child to try and fix it. Okay. Did you jiggle the handle? What? Did you jiggle the handle? Yeah, but it still wouldn't. That's my joke. Yeah. Do you go to the basement and turn off all the power for your line. <laughs> That's the one I haven't tried yet. I think I'll do that. <laughs> Did you unplug the actual the optical cable and plug it back in? Explode. Yes. Oh. And I also unplugged the one on the TV set and then plugged it back in. And it doesn't. With, with their customer service, you grant them access, they go onto your TV and service it from remote. I, I, I really? believe this. Yeah. Well, I mean, this TV is about two years old, three years old. So oh, they can do it. Yeah. They can do it. They can just go to my mm -hmm. TV set. Yeah, they, there's a thing in the menu that you log into, and it it gives them the code off the TV, and they remotely log in, fix the TV, and then log back out. That's oh. a very spooky well, Alex, area. What you have to do. That's why Samsungs are good TVs. You watch. They're not going to fix this problem. Although I'm sure they've had it before. You know. You know, I can't get that little thing off my because I don't want to watch my set having it say radio. I mean, not radio, <laughs> but uh, 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 optical audio. I don't want to, you know, I want to watch my TV show. So I guess I'll just have to watch old movies in the square ratio so it doesn't impinge on the picture. <laughs> I'll be watching TCM all the time, you know. <laughs> How you doing, Albert? I'm doing quite good. Everybody else doing well? Yeah, yeah. Audrey, you look terrific. Hanging you know, in there. Smile on your face. That's <laughs> nice. And, and how do I look? Well, you always look good. <laughs> huh? You always look good. Great. Yeah. 
You always smile and shake your head when you have nothing good to say. Oh, you just <laughs> look. Anyway, anyway. So uh, what what is what is new? Anything new? Oh, did you see about the people go down to the Titanic? Yeah, they're looking yeah. for them. What? Well, they're looking for them. For them. They, By the way, uh, they, they weren't they weren't researchers. They were they were tourists. They were tourists. Yeah. Well, did they really? Wow. I think the, I think the Titanic finally got revenge on them. <laughs> You know, because I've always always felt that what they've done is pretty terrible because there's no respect for these dead people who died there. You know, there should be a respect for that place. And you don't, you know, respect consider it like a, a, a what do you call it, a, 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 a cemetery, mm. you know, and, and treat it. It is a cemetery. But they just keep I saying, Why? oh, look, Why? I've got it. What? Why do we have to do memorials for every place people are dying? Everything in the world is going to be memorial. And every day is going to have a flag at half staff. And it's every, enough every with the comedy memorials in the world already. And you'll have to treat every comedy club with respect. A that, lot of people have died on those stages. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I, I, you know, hey, I, by the way, as, as long as we're, well, let me finish anyway. So they're de they can't, what happened? They can't find the thing, right? They're it's, looking yeah, into it's it. missing. It's missing. Moved. Obviously, it's if it's down there for a certain amount of time, you got to assume it's more than missing. We got four days of oxygen. It says they have four days of oxygen. Mm -hmm. it's, it's five people. My God, can you imagine if that thing imploded down there? Holy moly! <laughs> I don't think. I think they 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 don't though. I think those things are built strong enough. Yeah. No, I mean, if they die the there, do you? If right. they die there, do you need a memorial on the memorial? <laughs> <laughs> what are we going to do then? Yeah. They're going to send more people down. They're going to die, and you're going to have a memorial on a memorial. A memorial on the memorial. memorial. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Shooting the highway. You know, I live in Florida, where everybody is allowed to put a memorial where somebody dies. So you see flags and and yeah, flags. Oh, in, 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 soon in the whole world. highway is going to be memorial. In Europe, like in places like Spain and so on, you drive down the road and there are these memorials for people who died on the road right there. And there's yep. like a place for a candle and stuff. Yeah, like that. that's what they have in Florida. And you are legally allowed to get a placard to place on the on the highway, even if it's in the median. What's more safe than <laughs> really? that? Yo, know, yes. Yeah, it's insane with the memorial. The, you could die right. anywhere. <laughs> no, just the highway people get that. Just, hello, hello, to, by the way, hello, hello to Mike, by the way. Okay. Now, today is Juneteenth. Yep. Yeah. Any thoughts? I have a few. Oh, no. <laughs> Charlie, come, come, cover your ears, Charlie. <laughs> oh, no. Well, no, here's my problem. My problem isn't with Juneteenth. It's with the fact that we made it a national holiday when, let's face it, the blacks, or as they're known in Florida, those people, <laughs> uh, <laughs> are uh, uh, already have Martin Luther King's birthday. And now it's a <laughs> national holiday. Secondly, this is not Black History Month. This is Gay Pride Month. <laughs> okay. gay history month was a couple of months ago when was it charlie do you remember do you february. black history month is february it's february so you've got you've also got martin luther king's birthday that month don't you that's january, no, it's january. It's january. It's okay it's well january. i think maybe they should have made it the same month as martin luther king but then you get juneteenth you know uh and it's, it's, I, it's I'm, date I'm specific here. Well, I feel it's about time we made um, um, Cinco de Mayo a national holiday, mm -hmm. That's right. Mm. right? Because after all, aren't there a lot of uh, Mexicans in America and Spanish people in America? Yes, of course. I and want Rosh Hashanah to be a national holiday. <laughs> <laughs> Yom Kippur. <laughs> no, Yom Kippur is too, too depressing, you know. So, uh, is, so is the story of of, of Juneteenth. You know? Of Juneteenth, it was well, no, no June, very depressing no. story. No, actually, Juneteenth is a happy day because that's the last day they got the world out, word out to Galveston, Texas, that uh, the the free, uh, slaves have been freed. Up until yes, then, I, I all know. the people in Galveston, all the black people in Galveston, Texas, were indentured. Yeah. 
And it took them two years from the time mm -hmm. the law came into being. I mean, today it'd be next day, right? Be two minutes. years to get the word to Texas, mainly because nobody wanted to go to Texas. But anyway, <laughs> that's another problem. But For anyway, so now now we've got we've got Black History Month, Black Pride Month. What else do? How what other months do we have? I think to begin month. with, Women's I think they should be weeks, not months. Okay, because quite frankly, a month of having gay flags everywhere on television. And then uh, uh, the, the, then uh, during uh, Black Pride History Month, that's a problem. You know, it goes on for a month and every day there is something on the news about. And here's another tribute to Black History Month. One week. OK, would you argue with one week, Charlie? Yeah. <laughs> we, already gave, we already gave the black folks 28 day month the only one with 28 days I mean, in 28 <laughs> yeah they should be what complaining the hell? about that they should be complaining about and it. we do they are <laughs> yeah <laughs> and and the, the, the juneteenth how dare they you know let the slaves know they're free during gay pride month because that was going on then yeah but i just did <laughs> But there was like, uh, there was Juneteenth, and then there was something else earlier this month that was also a black, not ho official holiday, but another black uh, history day. And 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 it's just upstaging the gay pride month. Come on, let the gays have their month. Don't impinge on it. Move Juneteenth to like, make it April Teenth, you know, or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Either that or move gay pride away from Juneteenth. That might be a better. You'd go along with that, right, Charlie? Yeah. Okay. Move the gays to another month. Well, know. the right the right wingers want to swap gay pride and and Black History Month so that gay pride isn't a cold month. They can't have all those parades. Oh, no more no more marching in the street with assless chaps. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it, uh, it, uh, I think they want to make uh, gay pride uh, month. Um, um, well, gay pride. They should have a gay pride day and make it like June thirty second. You know. <laughs> But anyway, so I mean, am I wrong about this? I mean, are we getting a little too away, away with so many months being? And then there, of course, those people that go, you know, oh, this is Hallmark Card Month. You know, they they make their own little months, you know, for promotion. Yeah. Um, but uh, and and gay pride, you know, I mean, uh, how, how, does it cover all pronouns or just gay? Yeah. See, it's called Gay Pride Month. Yeah. It's not called Homo uh, Lesbian Month. Okay, it's not called Transsexual uh, Month. And then it applies to everyone, Alex. Isn't there one other thing now they've added to transsexual? LGBT. It's a lot of letters to put on a banner. Yeah, yeah. LGBT, Ooh. and then there's one new letter they Q. 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 Oh, that's Q plus. Q plus. <laughs> You're right. It is called now. What is Q plus? It's I'm just queer. like Apple TV Plus. What? It's just like Apple TV Plus. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> or, or Disney Plus. There you go. Now yeah. you're with it. Uh, what is Q Plus? It's Q I don't is know what, queer. It's queer. Though. Plus is others. Others? Plus is more. There anything left? Oh, non binary? <laughs> maybe? Yeah. Maybe if you don't have any genitalia at all, you might be another. You know, <laughs> It's for, it's for Ken dolls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ken dolls. Oh, no, it's L LGBTQIA is the new one. No, no, not really. Yeah. I LGBTQIA plus. Where's the Q? Where's the, the, a, the okay, A? The Q, the Q one, I know what that is. Hold on. The A it's, would be asexual, and the I yeah, would be people that, inter, intersexual, something like that. Yeah, <laughs> intersexual, yes. Yeah. Why, why can't they just? Oh, this is a good website. Just, There's all sorts. No, quit calling it LBGQ, all that and all that, and just say uh, all the people who don't agree with your sexuality. You know, I mean, come on. It's just, it's too much. It's too much already. I'm getting very confused, and I'm too old to get confused like this. It hurts. <laughs> it hurts. Right, uh, uh, Albert, who's worked with me for at least nine years of his life. Which, which part are you asking me do I agree with? <laughs>
the, by the way, the GTQ thing or the old thing or, or <laughs> back to memorials? What, what part? Any, take your pick. I agree with all of them. Oh, okay, fine. Thanks. Here's, that here's, way here's what it stands for, Alex. It's lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans, queer, questioning, intersex, asexual, and more. That's what and the plus more. is. More? Wait, more. more. Is that what the plus is? Yeah, and more. Yeah. And more? I didn't know. Name me one more. The, and the Q could either be queer or questioning. Yes. Yes, yes. The question. One more. Interstellar. <laughs> Interstellar. I'm about, I'm about confused. So you're dating, a, you're dating a woman, you're going back to her apartment, and then you say, well, I don't know what, what kind of sex I can have here because I'm questioning. You're assuming it's a woman. It could be an <laughs> intersexual questioner with bisexual, I mean, just, queer tendencies. But now, do are they upset that <laughs> you don't list all those now? Yes. Yeah. Oh. The, the tattoo artists are thrilled because it fills up a lot of space. <laughs> <laughs> you pay by the letter. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, so how is how's everything down in Florida, Albert? I guess okay. I don't really go anywhere. You don't go. You don't go anywhere. Not really. No. We don't either. What's I mean? What's the difference between here and anything else, anywhere else except for the politics? It's the Applebee's on the corner. It's the uh, yes, Longhorn right. Steakhouse. It's the Walmart. It's the, uh, you know, Whole Foods. Yeah. It's all the same shit everywhere you go in this country. So it's no different. It's warmer here than it is in most places. But other, other than that. You're really is, right. All of America is exactly alike now. Yeah. You know, I, there's no you're... mom and pop store that I can go to. There's no identity to where I live. None I at all. To, I hate to pull the when I was a boy card. <laughs> But the fact was, when I was a kid, you, you had somebody come out from the East Coast and they brought you stuff from the East Coast you couldn't yeah. get in San Francisco. Like they, sure. I remember there was a company called Barton's Chocolates mm -hmm. in New York, which were very, you remember, remember it, uh, 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 Jeff? It's Barton Chocolates. Uh, Marjorie, do you remember Barton's Chocolates at all? I'm from Philadelphia. How would I know that? <laughs> well, uh, anyway. <laughs> I remember Barton's I, I remember I was a kid as a kid. I love those Barton's chocolates because my aunt or somebody would bring them out whenever they came from New York. But now you can get anything anywhere, you know. If well, I you had Ghirardelli's in, in, in San Francisco. We had, had Ghirardelli's. That was our big chocolate. There was a big factory. Or San Francisco now. In fact, one of the oh. most evil things in the world was that uh People who were sentenced to San Quentin, uh, not San Quentin, but Alcatraz, said the worst thing about Alcatraz is when you sat out in the yard and you could smell the chocolate coming from the Ghirardelli oh. chocolate factory. Oh, wow. Well. Torture. That's torture, right? Yeah. Wow. Oh. And they could actually hear the parties and things going on across the water as well. Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. My father swam around Alcatraz once. Really? That water yeah. is freezing. He was a long distance swimmer. That was what's his hobby, his wow. little sport. <laughs> and he uh, went, you know, they they have a little of uh, swim around Alcatraz. <laughs> yeah. So I figured if he ever got caught and was thrown in Alcatraz, he could probably get away. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Uh, I used to, as a kid, I used to sit there and look out at that island when it was still a prison. Mm. In fact, I remember when it was a Civil War memorial. No, anyway, um, <laughs> uh, and and I would look at it and go, I wonder what it's like on there. So the first thing I did when I went back to San Francisco after they had opened it, you know, closed it down and then opened it up as a tourist uh, mm. place, was I got on the boat and went out there. I had to see what it looked like. Uh, and it's fat. If you haven't ever done it, it's fascinating. It is. Do you know how many people it held? Not that many. Seven hundred. Three hundred. Three hundred. Three hundred. And they weren't allowed to talk to each other. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. It was very. It was a horrible prison. It's where it's where Hoover sent all the people he hated. You know. When we drive to go see my mother, we drive by uh, San Quentin, and uh, I always wonder what's going on in there. And it turns out subsequently my wife has it works with somebody that was uh, a guest 
there for about 20 or 30 years. Oh, really? He said it is just, it's horrendous in there. It's overcrowded. It's, it's just terrible. Just oh, it's so especially overcrowded now. And the, yeah. it, when I was growing up, it wasn't as much overcrowded as it was just a prison that sat out there. Mm -hmm. And I always said, that, you know, anybody who left there, uh, when somebody said, "Well, what have you been doing?" I've been living over in Marin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I mean, it was. Uh, I I went over there on a couple of occasions, and I had a friend when I was a kid. I had a friend. His name was uh, Spectre. What was his first name? I can't remember now. Phil. It wasn't Phil. <laughs> but anyway, he, uh, his father was the um, uh, librarian wow. at San Quentin and had worked there for years and years and years and years. And this kid was doing something which he could have gone to jail for, but somehow he scooted on it. He was helping smuggle out books by Carol Chessman, who was this guy on death row who was famous for his books that he wrote about living in the prison and they could never figure out how it ever got out there. You know, you used to talk to a guy like that on the radio. But I used to talk to a guy that was in there. Yeah. 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 Mm. I had a deal where I had a web one of the first websites ever. Okay. And on it, I had a thing called Dead Man uh, Talking. Right. And uh, he wrote a, a column every month for me in which he would tell what it was like to live on death row. Mm. And uh, I, it was, uh, it was, uh, it was very, very interesting, the stuff he wrote. You know, and he never wrote about it. Uh, I think the first writing he did, he, his first thing is, uh, I'm on death row. And I'm not going to tell you what I'm here for. And I'm not going to make a case except to say I'm innocent. Okay. And then he went on, never proclaimed his innocent or ran it as a waiting. And, and it eventually caught up with me. People were protesting its existence and everything, you know, especially the parents of the girls who got killed. He, I finally went to a, my, I had a girlfriend who said to me, so what did he do? And I said, I don't know, you know. What did so, he do? Well, uh, so I went to, so she said, let's go to the library and look up his name. And we looked up his name immediately. It comes up with an article yeah. in Red Book called A Kiss from My Killer. Mm -hmm. And we come to find out that he was accused of killing, I think, four women and killed a fifth. But they only charged him with the five, four. So like with Trump, they, if they can't get him on all the on that thing, they might be able to get him on the other one. Okay. So literally he was in there. And I said to him, finally, I, I said, I, I found out what you, you know, what you did. And he said, well, I'm the, so I wasn't in here for parking tickets. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, whatever oh, happened to him? He's still alive. He's still in de on death row. Although I think, I don't know if they call it death row anymore. Cause I think they finally abolished the, did they, did they, Len, in California, yeah. abolish yep. the death they, penalty? They committed everybody to life. Yeah. yeah. In fact, that's how how Charlie Manson went from uh, from uh, uh, being scheduled for execution to life in prison. Mm -hmm. uh, although they've tried to bring it back, some people, but they're, they haven't been very successful at it. So, Whatever happened to Sirhan Sirhan? Did they execute him? No, he died oh, in prison, didn't he? He I died think, in prison, but I think, uh, he, I think he died. Yeah, yeah. When, well, hold on a second. Echo, <laughs> echo. When did Sirhan Sirhan die? As far as I know, Sirhan Sirhan is alive. He's alive. He oh, alive. Right. He died before, and he's seventy-one years old. And his birthday is on March nineteenth. So, if you want to send him a card. Oh. He absolutely is alive. No? Uh, in fact, I think I when you mentioned he was dead, I I said to myself, I don't think he's dead because I remember him coming up for parole. Yeah, uh, uh, recently, and um, a lot of people, I think even the Kennedy family said, "I oh, let him out," or "It's enough is enough already." You know, somebody tried to kill him in August of 2019, multiple stab wounds. Huh. That's what I was thinking about. Yeah. 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 So anyway, I mean that uh, you know, 
Yeah. How about the Boston Marathon guy? He said, and I know he was condemned to death, but I don't think that. I don't think they've done it yet. No, but he is He has been condemned to death. Yeah, yeah. Um, and um, yeah, so you know, hi, he's Williams in Texas. He'd have been killed decades ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, Speaking of Texas, Charlie, what's the temperature there? A hundred degrees. Uh, oh, that's it's a, it? It's a cool day today. It's a cool day. How, how, yeah. high did, how high did it get in the last couple of weeks? I think 105 is the hottest it got last week. Oh, mm. really? Okay. But then with the, uh, they had that other temperature, that you, you know. Where oh, yeah, the humidity has been the, horrible. The the heat index. The heat yeah. index. So the heat index is probably like 100. Yeah, I didn't see what that was. Oh, I that was the thing I hated most about Texas was the humidity. Yeah. <laughs> Houston's horrible. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Houston. Houston I lived in Houston. I couldn't keep a crease in my pants. <laughs> you know, it's terrible. It's just terrible. But so how's everything in Canada with you, uh, uh, Mike? It's really good. I'm just more curious, though. What do the prisoners on Rikers Island smell? <laughs> <laughs> what do they smell? They're glad, they're glad they're in Rikers Island. <laughs> <laughs> It must be bagels or something. Um, no, things are good here. Things are really good. I, I'm sorry I'm late, and I'm sorry I missed the last couple of weeks here. I've had a crazy, crazy couple of weeks. Uh, I just I just uh, was late today because I was doing up uh, my second episode with Tom Dreesen just now. So Oh, okay. Say that hello. Was did, are you, did you say hello for me? I will next time, for sure. Because he's an old – I had him on years ago. He was a guy who took me to see Sinatra. He got me tickets to go see Sinatra, but by that time, Sinatra was pretty much Let me out, out to lunch. Circle Star Theater. Circles, you're right. How do you know that? I don't know because my dad was there actually that day. Really? Well, I, I, I went there, and he uh, he he lit the stage on fire while he was doing his act because <laughs> he put out his cigarette after he did one of those, you know torts on her and threw it down on the ground for dramatic effect but then stomped it with his foot but he was about five inches away from the cigarette all right the i don't state, know if you're, the, the i don't know if you're gonna be able to see this or not but there is my father yeah. right right uh here and sinatra coming into the circle star theater that day oh he was they, coming he was coming you know that's the day i think well there he played a couple of days there right I would assume because the day I went there, I was supposed to meet Sinatra, ah. and I didn't because Dreesen said to me he isn't seeing anybody because, because Jilly just died. Oh, and he was like really depressed about the death of Jilly. But anyway, he threw he threw the cigarette down on the ground and he tries doesn't stomp it out, and the floor is like a rug. Okay, mm. for the floor of the stage <laughs> is a rug, and as he's going into his next song. <laughs> Smoke is rising from the stage. <laughs> and Frank Jr., who's conducting the orchestra, looks over at him and goes, Dad, the stage is on fire. <laughs> and so Sinatra looked down and went, whoops, and he put it out with his foot. But I mean, it was, you know, that was, that was the kind of Sinatra that existed at that time, you know. Yeah, I would have loved to have seen Sinatra in his heyday. Yeah, yeah. my dad, my dad used to see him in, in Manhattan back in the forties, I guess. Yeah, my father played with him in uh, at Tahoe, and in fact, oh. I I was there when he was working with him at Tahoe, and I saw Sinatra and Dean Martin, the whole Rat Pack, go into a side room, and they were doing some drinking and things like that. Hmm. But that's the most I saw of Sinatra in the earlier years. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Uh, oh. But uh, that, that's what I, my father said, uh, son, you know, <clears throat> we've, uh, I'm your father. I love you dearly. We have had a wonderful life together. Who knows how much longer I have in my life. He said, but before I go, the one thing I would like to do with you is have a drink. Now, I don't drink. I never did drink. And he oh. wanted me to have a drink with him, have a drink with your dad. And Okay, you know, but I wasn't that I was against it or I was an alcoholic or whatever. I could take a drink. So he says, uh, I said, okay. He says, what will you have? I said, 
Um, oh, I don't know. What are you having? I, he says, I'm having uh, J Jack Daniels. Yeah, I think he loved Jack Daniels on the rocks. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'll take the same thing then. So he gets two, two on the rocks. Okay. <laughs> so my father holds up his drink. I hold up mine. And we go down the hatch and we go, and I go, oh my God. <laughs> How do you drink this stuff? And he looked back at me and said, and you thought I was having fun all these years. <laughs> <laughs> that was you know, my father. Funniest man I ever knew. That's a beautiful moment. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> In the South, they, they drink Jack and Coke. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jack and Coke? Where do they drink Jack that? Daniels and Coca-Cola. Where? Up here Jack and Coke's a big deal up in Canada. Oh, really? oh, really? Yep. Okay, what else is big in Canada? <laughs> Crown and Coke is also big. Oh, yeah. uh -huh. Canadian about... Club and Coke? Huh, come to think of it. <laughs> almost anything. <laughs> no, but you know what? You know what's here in Kelowna that uh, you might not. We have a wine industry up here that is very robust. Um, I kind of live in the Napa Valley of Canada. So there's a lot of wine where I am every, every Sunday, my wife and I, if we have friends in town or whatever, we'll go two or three or four different wineries. And you can do that all summer and you'll never double up. There's yeah, so, many. so you live in Kelowna, is it? I live in Kelowna, yeah. Kelowna, you know what I would love to do is move to Kelowna. <laughs> and start, and you start any kind of business named Jerry's. <laughs> <laughs> no one will get that joke who is. I got it. You got it. You got yeah. it. I got it. Okay. Did you get it, Marjorie? No. See? That's how young she is. Yeah. Gosh, I married a teenager. <laughs> no, Jerry Colonna was a very famous comic at one time. It's kind of like there's every, as I've gone through life, I suddenly realized the younger, the older you get, the less people remember your references. Yeah. You know? How about you, Giller? Do you have that problem at all? Because you you know spring chicken. <laughs> I just want to see. <laughs> you made a you made a funny earlier on. Uh Sirhan Sirhan is an echo. <laughs> I told you, this guy is one of the funniest people I know. In fact, I did an interview with him, which I'm going to run this week. Uh, you're, 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 you're brilliant. You're really funny. Uh, I expect to hear from my attorneys. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. I'd, I'd, I would like a memorial. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'd like my own month. Okay. <laughs> um, I'll, 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 and there there are four famous people who are Alcatraz four famous people okay let me see if I can name them well you won't <laughs> well I mean Clint, there, was, there was there was Al Capone Clint Eastwood there he is. <laughs> Burt Lancaster <laughs> Nicholas Cage and Sean Connery oh, uh, you're right you're absolutely yeah. right yeah. <laughs> That's all I got. Yeah, but, um, <laughs> but you're right. You got them. You got the, that four. I didn't think of it in those terms. So yeah. I don't think of real people. You're old. <laughs> real people that actually live there and, you know, spent time on the rock. Uh, but it was, it was a, it was a terrible place to be sentenced to, you know. But anyway, so yeah, and you had the Birdman, which was Burt Lancaster, and you had uh, uh, Sean Connery, who was in that. Uh, what was it? The, uh, the uh, Rock. What the I rock. called that film was the the other James Bond movie, because if you think about it, it kind of alludes to him being James Bond. A little bit. Yeah, it sort of does in the film. Yeah. And so I considered that he was like James Bond and he'd gotten sent to The Rock. And uh, he, well, anyway, whatever happened in that film, I, <laughs> I've watched it. 
Uh, Birdman of Alcatraz, Lancaster. Who were the other ones? Nicholas Cage. What? Did well, he Nicholas Cage and, and Sean Connery were, were both in the yeah, Rock. They were both in the Rock. Okay. Yeah. And who was the other one you mentioned? Uh, Clint Eastwood. Clint, of course. Dirty Harry. Yeah. In fact, it's Clint Eastwood, Eastwood is the reason why if you go to San Quentin, not San Quentin, Alcatraz, some of the restoration in Alcatraz, like what they called Times Square, which was the main Mm -hmm. thoroughfare the main cell block in there he completely restored for the movie mm -hmm. and then he restored the uh the uh um, cell block that had all the solitary confinement yeah, d block yeah that's amazing. yeah they did that they redid that and that was all courtesy of clint eastwood too and they said if it hadn't been for movies this place would be falling apart and yeah, they let you walk into those cells it is frightening to be in a yeah in a eight six by eight foot room with no light nothing yeah, yeah. that was terrible was terrible but you know i i i hope they reopen it just for trump <laughs> <laughs> that would be a lot of fun i thought gosh i'm it's endlessly entertaining to me how people are and i don't want to get too political today how people in the republican party are trying to excuse bad behavior you know uh, yeah, that's not political yeah yeah no but i just don't <laughs> understand it i just you know uh i mean yeah i mean say you like him say you think he's terrific but you know those, those people who even were on his side are saying it's inexcusable because he was he did stuff that was stupid absolutely yeah. stupid how how far are you from mar-a-lago uh albert uh probably uh, just under an hour really yeah have oh. you seen it oh many times yeah many times yeah i uh, drive by and there's guards there that wave you on and say keep driving they don't want you really? to even, they don't want you to slow down i'm trying to remember who originally owned that home do you not remember at all i have no idea it was yeah. that, yeah. that post mary rather lady yeah yeah the yeah. Post, post, the, okay the post family yeah okay um uh, yeah okay and then uh, they owned it all right and then it was turned into a whatever it is i don't i think it's a brothel now if i'm not <laughs> <laughs> um secret document storage yeah. <laughs> Well, I thought what was lovely about what he did, I uh, he should really, his defense should be, I, I simply put them in the bathroom so people would have some reading matter while they were on the can. In in the uh, chandelier shitter? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is a chandelier in there, isn't there? <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Unbelievable. And uh, uh, let's see here. Oh, what did we watch that we like, Marjorie? Oh, English. The English. It's been on Amazon for about a half a year now. And so I saw that it was Emily Blunt is in it and she produced it. And we watched it. And it's really good. It's like a revisionist Western. And it's just really, it's br brilliantly photographed. And the story is you never see what's coming at the end. You just know there's something strange, you know. And what's it, it called? The, the English is that? What's, what's called, the English? It's called not the, the, it's called the English. 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 Yeah, because that's what the Indians called the English. Uh, I mean, uh, and and yeah. all the most of the major characters in this show are are British. I mean, they're they're all English people who came over to America to like seek their fortune and so on, and so they're they're referred to by the by the Indians as the English. Uh, and I guess the I guess the English called the other guys the Indians because they weren't Indian at all. <laughs> no, were they? No, they were the natives. No, well, Columbus Clint, thought he reached India. That's why they called only him because India. yeah, it was only because Columbus made a mistake, right, Albert? Idiot. Well, <laughs> uh, I'm not even going to say what. Well, I think he's overestimated <laughs> anyway, because how can you say somebody discovered something? when there were already Sorry. people here. No, the people that discovered it were the American, the Native Americans, because they came across uh, the, uh, what's, uh, what's the play, the Bering, Bering Strait. Bering Strait. Bering Strait. 
and came down into what is our continent and populated it. And when they got here, this place was nuts with people. You know, it wasn't like it is now, but there were a lot of people here. How dare you say Columbus, you know, discovered it. And when I say that to people, they say, oh, well, then it was Leif Erikson. Yeah, another <laughs> white guy. You know? Uh, what about uh, Vespucci? It's named after Vespucci. Why? America, well, America's named after. Why? We're, Why? But we're not called. Well, yeah. And how I'm confused. It's all mixed up here. And how about United States? Oh, remember him? <laughs> <laughs> he came here before America Vespucci. We're well, the only people that what? call it America. The people in, in South America and Europe, they don't call it America. They call it the United States. Right. Well, the thing is that America Vespucci, the only thing he did was he thought he had found the fountain of youth in Florida. And he didn't even think he had found another country. That wasn't Vespucci. Good. Huh? That wasn't Vespucci. Sure it was. Ponce de, de Leon. Ponce de Leon. It was Ponce de Leon. Okay. Yeah, yeah, what did yeah, America yeah. Vespucci think he found? <laughs> no, he America. Found. Vespucci <laughs> found Columbus, Ohio. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's right here in Wikipedia. Wow. Well, uh, yeah, it, Vespucci. Uh, America Vespucci. I haven't heard that name in years. You know, I heard all these names when I was growing up in uh, North Beach in San Francisco uh, because uh, it was in an all Italian neighborhood. So you heard about Columbus, you know, there were stores named after Columbus, America's Vespucci was, were stores and things like that. Uh, you know, all I learned a lot about Italian culture. In fact, I grew up Italian living in that neighborhood. <laughs> hell, I went to, I went to uh, confession, you know, so. <laughs> didn't help. It, it didn't. <laughs> well, you know, I was a little kid and. I, I've told the story before. In order to, they used to show they used to show a movie at the uh, at the church uh, every Saturday. Now, prior to that, all the kids had gone to the Palace Theater, and we all went to the Kitty Matinee. But then, as soon as the church started their, you know, their free movie on Saturday, all the parents who were Italian in that neighborhood made their kids go to the church, and so I'd be sitting there in the Palace Theater all alone, me and the projectionist. And finally, I said, what happened to everybody? And they said, oh, well, the, the church is showing movies now. And I went, well, I got to be part of that, because when you were a kid in those days, you would go to the movie, they'd show you a Western, and then for the week afterward, you were all playing the Western, okay? Uh, you know, with your little hand bullet, you know. And um, so I decided, I said, how do I get a ticket? They said, well, no, you just go to confession. I said, what's that? And they taught me what confession was. And you get a ticket. So I uh, I went down there and they said, uh, you know, what do you have to confess? And, and now you're, you're what? You're eight years old, nine years old. What, what? How many sins can you possibly have? You know? Well, you had a good one. You just tell the priest you're a Jew. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That I didn't tell him. So that I made up something. I don't know. I yelled but at so my parents. so was Jesus. So it's okay. Well, there yeah. you go. Jesus was Jewish. I, I yelled at my parents or something like that, I confess. So he gives me a ticket. So I go to the movie. Now it's a couple of weeks later. I'm walking down the street with my mother. We're going down to do something or another. And all of a sudden, this uh, priest comes over to us. And I recognize him as the priest I did confession to. His name is Father Larry. <laughs> How come I remember that name? Anyway, and and he said, um, by the way, uh, nice to meet you. Your son's a wonderful boy. Every <laughs> week comes to confession. <laughs> and my mother's just very stoic. And then the priest walks away. And then I feel a hand hitting the back of my head going, don't ever do that again. <laughs> That's why you remember his name. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. uh, Actually, I remember he's a pretty good looking guy, young guy, you know. Uh, obviously frustrated. Uh, Hot priest. Huh? Hot priest. Yeah. Serve time in Alcatraz. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, uh, Marigold Vespucci is credited with discovering the Amazon River. 
Really? Is that all? Not America? There should, are there <laughs> he actually never, never made it to North America. He was oh. South America. Oh. He's got a good PR agent then. I got <laughs> Gee, yeah. That's the kind of that's kind of scary. Anyway. Um, so I'm working on any new projects, Mr. Giller. I'm sorry. Are you working on any projects? No, I'm, 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 uh, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm collating all the CBS mailbag letter writers, so I can I can uh, uh, make that available uh, to people who had their letters written on the CBS show, and and it'd be easy to find them. Oh, and right wow. now, I'm up to 1996. Hmm. <laughs> Oh, that oh, makes oh. you the Leatherman. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it, it makes me not having a life. Bingo, bingo. What? That was good, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> You've also um, said you're working on another project about uh, with Shecky on this show. Well, I thought that was between us. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> Forget it. Forget I ever said it, folks. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd say. I mean, I, I because I've I've only done one show, and there are only what six thousand or more to do, so it's it's going to take a long while. Um, I, I downloaded all of his pop ups uh, with Rick in them, and I want to put to collate all of the extended conversations that Rick had regarding uh, his encyclopedic knowledge of film, TV, and Dave. Very um, good. And yeah. uh, wow. he said he appeared on the second pop up, uh, and that was his first pop up appearance. Mm. Um, uh, and and that only took an hour, <laughs> so it, it's going to take a long while for. for well, yeah, yeah, he appeared on the second one, I think, because the first one was just I did it off the top of my head. I just turned the machine yeah. on and said, "I'm going to see if anybody calls." I don't. You you didn't even <laughs> call it pop up for some time. Yeah. Yeah. I think Shecky showed up at the end of that one. I think Shecky was actually in the first one, but he showed up later. Oh, really? Oh, I okay. think so. I have I, it. Right. I can always go back. I don't know why you you felt you had to download them. If you had known me at that time, you could have. I would just have given you the entire files. Um, actually, I'm missing one or two shows, or there are one or two shows I can't find on YouTube. So maybe let I'll, me know what the dates are, and I'll send them to uh, you. Make them available to you. Yeah. Let, me, let me let me punch it up. Because I collect every show that I. You know, well, we've been do, doing this three years now, right? So I guess we've been doing it three years, haven't we? Yeah. Well, it's got to be about one hundred and fifty of them. Hmm. Yeah, you first you first called it uh, Alex Bennett's Zoom special. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then Zoom program, then Facebook pop up, and then then pop up finally became the standard title. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you say he was on his first. Let me let me scan through it at the end. I thought it was at the end. Just, just send me the information. Probably ever, and, and I'll get them to you. Yeah, I don't see it. Uh, yeah, Brian Neary, Mark okay. Thorne, and Stephen Bender were the were the were the Bender three. was with us. And were you there from the very beginning, oh. Ed? Oh, that's Edward. No, that that was. I was, I was, I was, there. I was on there first one as well. Were you on the first one? Yeah. Wow. I don't yeah. see you. And you've been well, on. I, I don't think you've you missed any, have you, Lynn? Maybe one when I was on vacation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I I love doing this. This is my well, Marjorie. Oh. Yeah. Marjorie <laughs> and I are planning on taking, you know, some extended vacations, but I'm gonna buy a computer to take with me so that I can do this show. Mm. I don't care about the nighttime thing. This show. <laughs> That would be amazing. That would be amazing. You know, well, I mean, I, obviously, if I get a a, a laptop, um, Apple laptop, I can, I it'll do everything this does. You know, so, uh, yeah. well, you know, and we can sit there, and if it's on a little boat somewhere, they've all got Wi-Fi. Yep. And uh, you know, plus, you know, I I can't walk anymore, so I don't want to go out. I'll just <laughs> stay on the boat and. Look at look at it as the castles float by, and I can wave uh -huh. to Marjorie. Yeah. Are you thinking about, thinking about a river cruise in Europe? We're thinking about yeah. all kinds of things. I mean, right. I just I want I you know she says, well, what do we, let's pick something good because we're going to do one, and I went, no, we're going to do like twenty, okay, 
So wow. figure out where you want to start, you know. So um, I'm you almost have a to, desire. Ten o'clock at night over there, you know right. that. That's right. Yeah, I really yeah. want to keep the time. I realize that. Okay. Yeah. Just yeah. want to make no, sure you know. Yeah, no, I'm 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 aware of that. That's why I'm not going to do the night show. Right. Because right. that would be at like two o'clock in the morning or oh. something like that. But the thing is that, uh, uh, yeah, I just you know. Uh, uh, just go everywhere. In fact, I, I I've even looked at going to the art Antarctic so I can smell the penguin shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know why not? It's a very small that boat. Is. It's got like fifty people on the boat, and that's it. You know. Anyway, and I saw a picture of Shecky the other day that he took uh, with the penguins in back of him. <laughs> and all I could think of was, oh boy, he was smelling that and taking that picture. <laughs> yeah. Hey, this has been good. Charlene hasn't said a word today, so say something, Charlene. Something. <laughs> we we love having her here because it, it, she's always she's taking Shecky's place, is what she's. Yeah. <laughs> Shecky always was the first one to call, so he got in there first. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and uh, also, uh, thanks to uh, uh, um, uh, you haven't said a word either, Boddicker, have you? Yes, I have. You oh. just didn't hear me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you were talking too much. Yeah. And as uh, uh, love, uh, Scott's been calling us for a long time, not only on this show, but on our other shows too. So thank you, Scott, for being here. Charlie, always here, always appreciated. Uh, and it's also a good time of the day to do it because then he doesn't have to do softball. <laughs> right? And yep. thanks to Len LaFrisco sure. out there in California. Of course, um, our, our good friend, uh, Paula Levin, uh, who has, and, and her fr good friend, Paula 12, which is, <laughs> <laughs> I always pull that joke and you always laugh at it. I don't know why. Uh, Jeff, good having you here. Marjorie, you've been very quiet today. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Albert, good having you here. It's always good having you here. Uh, and, and it seems you kind of remember when we do these things. It's, this is a nice group, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, and Mike Chisholm, thank you so much. Uh, as he's got his whole set now blinking. Is that what it's doing? <laughs> yeah, I... Uh... Yeah, that's that's Dave's bridge. One of Dave's bridges is the LED lights. Did you make those all yourself? Uh, no, the great Kathleen Anchors made that bridge. Oh. Or she had people do it. Yeah, that's a bridge from the set. It is from the set? Yes, sir. God, I didn't know they'd save that. I thought everything wound up in a dumpster the next morning. You know, This was fished out of the dumpster and ended uh -huh. up here. So. Yeah. And uh, of course, the lovely and attractive Don Giller, who I think is one of the most, one of the funniest men in the universe. So I, I just you know, and, and precisely because he doesn't know how funny he is. <laughs> what? Um, uh, there are two pop ups that were missing. I just I just sent emailed you the, the two dates. The OK, two and I can probably tell you how I'll set them up some way so you can get them. I'd like you them by five thirty. You'd like them by five thirty, <laughs> <laughs> and as I as, as as the saying goes, blow it out your ass. <laughs> and Alex, you didn't say goodbye to Jeff. I did say goodbye didn't, to Jeff. Yeah, just checking. Just she, checking. She, Marjorie, just checking. Boy, she's just on my case about everything. Wow. <laughs> and finally, a very good night to all of you. And from Edward Berger, he signs us off by saying. That's all, folks. Bye-bye, <laughs> everybody. See you next week. Thank you, Alex. <laughs>